All right, this is OpenStax US History, a review of the review questions from chapter one. I hope that this can be helpful in guiding and navigating towards the correct answers, but also helpful in identifying why the incorrect answers are in fact not the right or optimal choices. So let's go ahead and look at these review questions. So number one, uh, which of the following Indian peoples built homes in cliff dwellings that still exist? Uh, the right answer, we'll use a different color. The right answer to this question is A, the Anasazi. Recall that both the Aztecs and the Incas, these are large empires in South America. As such, they have, you know, in some cases, millions of people living within them. They cover large amounts of area. So it'd be pretty difficult for us to generalize what all people in those empires lived in. The Anasazi and the Cherokee are much more smaller in terms of their political structure. They are tribal. So we can certainly make a generalization about how these people live or the type of dwellings that they live in. The Cherokee are located in the southeast of the United States. The Anasazi in the southwest. Because the Anasazi uh, rely almost exclusively on agriculture, right? So agriculture is growing food. That means that their permanent or their dwellings can be permanent because they're not hunting and gathering, whereas the Cherokee might be a little bit more inclined to hunt and therefore would not have as permanent of structures, right? So it's the Anasazi in the Southwest due to their reliance on agriculture. Question number two, uh, and we'll go ahead and switch it up here. Uh, which culture developed the first writing system in the Western Hemisphere? The answer to this one is C, the Olmec. Uh, we should be able to immediately uh, rule out the Inca. We want to recall that they had no writing, and you should know that the Inca had no writing in South America. Uh, the Pueblo were in North America, and although there is some evidence that perhaps you did have the knowledge or know-how of writing spread to North America via trade. It's not where it originated. Uh, writing originated in Mesoamerica. And at that point, then it becomes a question of how familiar are you with the evolution of Mesoamerican civilization? And in that, it's the Olmec who come first. It's the Maya who come after and it's the Aztec who come last. And so writing was discovered or invented, whatever you want to call it, by the Olmec, passed down to the Maya, they had writing, passed down to the Aztec, they had writing as well. Question number three, which culture developed a road system rivaling that of the Romans? The correct answer to that question is the Inca. Uh, when we talk about or when we think about, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, impressive monuments or the allocation of mass resources, we want to say, well, that's really only possible through empires. And so as such, we could rule out perhaps local groups like the Cherokee. We could grow, uh, uh, rule out local groups like the Anasazi, leaving, that, leaving us only with the Inca or the Olmec, where the road system comes in kind of, uh, or where it should come in, is remembering that the Inca had no wheels and locations were located in the Andes Mountains. And so the road system helped the Inca to administer their empire where they had a very mountainous terrain and really no wheeled vehicles to get around. And so these roads were not used for wheeled vehicles, but rather used for people to travel on them. Question number four, what are or what were the major differences between the societies of the Aztec, Inca, and Maya and the Indians of North America? So this is pre-Columbian New World. New World refers to North and South America. Pre-Columbian simply refers to before Christopher Columbus. And we can pretty much categorize it in North America and South America. Now, which of these groups belong to South America? Aztec, Inca, Maya. So we can put that under this category. The Aztec technically in the Maya, technically we might call that Central America, but for the purposes here, 
Uh, Indians in North America, of course, we have a lot of different tribes. So certainly there's much more diversity. That's one distinction that we can say. There's much more diverse groups of people. Generally speaking, they're more dispensed. Or, or dispersed is probably the right word there. Uh, more spread out, right? That would be a good way of putting of putting it. And a much looser kind of political system that you find there. So whereas we have more what we might call tribal units, here you have massive empires, right? Massive empires. So more diverse, more dis. Let's go ahead and just write spread out. more spread out, more tribal in terms of uh, politics. We might also say uh, lower population, right? We might say higher population or at least uh, more dense, right? So those are some of the differences, right? More diversity, more spread out, tribal units were emphasized more lower populations in South America, specifically the Aztecs, the Maya and the Incas. These were massive empires They were very well organized, they were tightly structured, and they maintained high population centers. Question number five, the series of attempts by Christian armies to retake the Holy Lands from the Muslims was known as, and the answer to this one is the Crusades. A couple of these other answer choices that we got here, the Reconquista, this was Catholic Spain versus Muslim oops, rulers. And this stretched roughly from you know 800 to 1492. It was a very, very long, slow war in Spain between Catholics and Muslims. The Black Death, of course, this is the plague in Europe, roughly 1340. Uh, the Silk Road are trade routes. between Europe and Asia, right? Trade routes between Europe and Asia. So those are not the right answer choices. Uh, number six, blank became a wealthy trading city in the east. The answer is Venice. Venice is located or Venice is uh, yeah, located in Italy, known for its merchant activity. Uh, Rome, we can think of that as home to the Pope. So it's not necessarily economically significant. Rome was much more religious, or it has much more significance in terms of religion. Jerusalem, again, this is the holy city. And Carrascone, I have no idea what that is, is not the right answer, right? Venice. Uh, question number seven, in 1492, the Spanish forced these two religious groups to either convert or leave? The answer is A, Jews and Muslims. Uh, for Spain, once Ferdinand and Isabella united the crown, Spain was a heavily Catholic nation. The Protestant Reformation, which may not be covered in this particular chapter, split Christianity between Catholics and Protestants. Right, so these two groups, Catholics and Protestants, they still fall under this umbrella of Christians, right? So they're still Christians. Uh, Christians and Jews, nope, because Catholics are Christians, so it wouldn't make sense for them to force Christians out. Uh, it could be Protestants, but the key thing here being this date, 1492, the Protestant Reformation happened, I don't know, we'll say 1519, uh, something like that, right? 1517. So this, the, the formation of Protestants has not happened yet, therefore it's not this answer. And of course the answer is not D because the Spanish are primarily Catholic. The answer is A, Jews and Muslims. Question number eight, how did European feudal society operate? How was this a mutually supportive system? So when we think about European feudal society, in terms of chronological order, we can think Roman Empire. That ended roughly 500 CE. Then you had the Middle Ages. This was when feudalism 
thrived, right? This is roughly 500 to 1500. And then that gives way to the age of exploration, pretty much where our class begins. And of course, that's with Columbus's discovery of the new world. So we're focusing on what was European society like in the 1000 years living up to this. Feudal society was a society that mostly consisted of three classes, lords, knights, and serfs. They all played their own respective roles. Oh, I'm actually getting a little bit short on room here. Maybe I'll scoot this over. Lords, these were the land owners. Knights were the warriors. All right, that makes sense. Serfs were the farmers. How did each of them uh, you know, relate to one another? Well, the lords offered protection, right? The knights offered their service. So in return, the knights or the warriors would fight for a lord. In return, the knights would be able to live there. And the serfs provided the food, right? So the serfs provided the knights and the lords with food, the knights and the lords then would protect the serfs. This was a time period where, you know, outside raids were very common. So this system worked, right? So the lords own the land, they offer protection, they offer a place to live. Knights are the warriors, they live on the lord's land, so they get to live on the lord's land, and in return what they do is they offer their service, they protect both the lords and the, uh, the serfs, and the serfs, they provide the food, they work on the land, and of course, what they get in return is protection and safety. Uh, the lords might also live in a castle here, right? So that's notes, right? The lords would own the castle and the castle would offer protection from outside raiders, right? That's how society worked. Uh, question number nine, why did Columbus believe he could get to the far east by sailing west? What were the problems with his plan? Contrary to popular imagination, uh, Columbus knew the world was round, right? So that is not the correct answer. Columbus's big miscalculation, where did Columbus go wrong? He thought the world was smaller than it actually was, right? So he believed the world to be much smaller. He anticipated by sailing west that he could get to Asia or India much quicker. That's what his miscalculation was, right? And that was the problem. Question number 10, the city of blank became a leading trading center for Muslim scholarship. The answer is Timbuktu. This is a question referring to the empires in Africa prior to the arrival of Europe. So we'll draw Africa here. Here's Saudi Arabia, here's Northern Africa. Uh, kind of a bad map there, but recall that Spain and Portugal are located here. Portugal initially beginning the age of exploration desired to sail around Africa to get to trade goods in the east. In doing so, maybe let's use a different color here, established trading cities and ports right along Africa. Now before, uh, before this all occurred, right, before the Portuguese showed up, right, so we're talking about the Portuguese are roughly you know, showing up around uh, the 1450s or so. so from about 800 to maybe 1400, you had West African empires, right? And you should know these, it's the Ghana, it's the Mali, and the Songhai, or Songhai Empire. And they existed in Western Africa along the Niger River, which ran roughly like this, right? And so that provided a, a base for agricultural production where you could um, create an empire and a very sophisticated civilization. The city that was important there was Timbuktu and that was located roughly right here. Uh, and that was a major trading center across the Sahara Desert where merchants would bring uh, you know, various trade goods, but also scholarship. Uh, Mali is the name of the empire, not the city, right? So this is an empire, not a city. Uh, Morocco, this is, uh, you know, a country slash geographic area, right? So Morocco is not a city. Morocco is located roughly right here. A lot of the traders that came to Timbuktu came from Morocco. Cairo is in Egypt, right? So that's... 
Um, not the correct answer, although, it, you know, depending on what time period that we're referring to, possibly, but Cairo's right here. It's not Western Africa, so it's not immediately relevant to our class. So the correct answer is Timbuktu. Uh, last question, question number 11, which of the following does not, again, pay attention to this right here, this is tricky, which of the following does not describe a form of slavery traditionally practiced in Africa? Uh, the correct answer here is uh, question D, a system in which people are enslaved permanently on account of their race. When we compare slavery uh, historically, uh, and slavery in the New World. Some of the key characteristics of New World slavery, and this is especially true after the development of it, is that New World slavery is heritable. It is permanent or a lifetime sentence and increasingly becomes based on race, white and black. So the correct answer is D. All of these other ones were uh, part or, or could be part of what was considered slavery in Africa or the old world. So I'll go ahead and leave it at that.